Today we are talking about our heaviest game, and I mean by weight and gameplay. In Cloud Smart, you get a ton of stuff, and you should for the amount of money that you pay for it, but nonetheless, you get over 250 chips, you get a plethora of neoprene, you get a good chunk of books and player aid sheets, which are great resources that are also waterproof, so if you want to go outside and play in a torrential downstorm, you're covered. Uh, waterproof cards, amazing faxes and support online based on their less than stellar rule book. But by the time that we're filming this, they have come out with their upgrade pack, which we've ordered ahead on the Kickstarter. And you can also get the new second edition, which will come with the better, more thorough rubric. Yeah, and the other thing is it comes with uh, Poco chips as your characters instead of cardboard chips, which just makes it uh, a little more fun when you're playing the game, as well as they stand up better overall. Yeah, and we like the tactical nature of moving the chips around as opposed to just moving chits or, or even little plastic minis. And they have a function as well because you take your character chip, but you stack their health or they have upgrades underneath the characters. And if you upgrade them, you flip them over for the most part. There are a couple factions where you get different characters on the other side, but... You flip them over, and, and so they're, they are useful. They're almost kind of like war game chits, but they're big, heavy poker chips. So overall, um, we have not found an element in this box that we don't think is quality. Even the organization that comes within the box is fabulous. Um, it's a little laborious to set up, but it's organized. So easy to find things, and none of the neoprene is going to get damaged when you stick it all back in the box. So... Now that we've told you a little bit about the components, let's get into the theme of this game. So I am a thematic gamer. Um, if I don't like the theme, it's going to be a lot harder to win me over um, with game mechanics alone. Um, and the cool part of this game is there's a lot of lore. They have taken a great deal of time to create the stories of every faction in this box. Um, Along with the stories, they've actually created co-op scenarios, solo scenarios, um, and they tell you the story of what's happening and why you're going into battle. So as you read, um, you have some lore at the beginning, but then after each scenario, the lore builds and you can really feel the theme um, and the, the presence of what the story um, is about within the gameplay. So it's not just a painted on theme, it's well worked into the mechanics of the game. Yeah, it's well thought out for all the, the different factions and everything else. The game comes with, again, this stack of books this is in the base game. And we also have the, the hardcover book that comes in and expands on the stories. But what comes inside the box, I think is, is definitely enough in terms of all the storytelling and the lore that, that she was explaining. We play it primarily, uh, th there are different game modes. There's basically Versus, which is two to four people. There's the co-op, which she explains. And then there's the solo scenarios, but we play the solos as a co-op as well. Uh, and, and those are really cool the way that they're laid out because they're laid out in a kind of a Gloomhaven-ish fashion where you know you set up your board in a certain fashion, you have these people, and then just after round after round, you know how to bring out these things for the AI, different units, and fight them. So it's a well-organized kind of different way to play the game. And you can take turns very puzzly when you're doing that, but you also still have some luck elements in terms of die rolls and some cards that you'd pull. Absolutely. And the other uh, interesting part of playing the solos as a uh, co-op or as a team, one person can control the AI in the sense of just moving them along and doing what they need to do, um, and the other person can come up with a strategy. So it's also a great way if you were teaching somebody the game, they can control the AI just in the movements and learn the mechanics of the game, and then um, they would be better situated to play one versus one, especially if one of you is experienced. So we've played this game 50 hours, which I feel bad kind of saying because that's a it's more than a work week, but nonetheless, uh, we've played it a, a number of times. We've played it in the versus modes and in the solo modes. We haven't even touched the co-ops yet, and we still feel that there's a, a number of plays left in this base box for us. So replayability, you would say this is going to stay in the collection for the foreseeable future. 
Absolutely, and um, for the quality and value of this game, we definitely think that uh, we will get our money's worth. Yeah. Um, we track our hours and our play versus cost, um, and this one has uh, definitely well. <laughs> definitely come down uh, in price per hour based on just the sheer volume of play it's getting. Yeah, we, we definitely recommend it. I think you can you can take the plunge. They have the second version coming out soon with the kind of updated rule set. Uh, the nice thing about Chip Theory games is, let's just say you're it's not for you completely. You can always trade it out or sell it for, for at, near, or potentially more than what you got it for. So other than the, the the risk of actually just taking the time to learn it, it's almost like a risk-free proposition within the board game world, which is nice. Yeah, so for our collection, it definitely goes the distance.